before we begin, thank you very much to Hotshot Did Nothing Wrong for joining the Patreon campaign. Uh, <laughs> he's done many things wrong. We have gone over his sins. I've made a career out of going over his sins. Uh, but we're not we're not discussing that one here. So uh, just as a quick Patreon update thing, thank you guys very much. The streak will continue for at least another week. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for helping to keep the channel going, and the support does mean the world to me. And thank you to everyone who watched my review this week. It is, uh, if you haven't watched it, it is for RoboSense $1,400 Optimus Primal toy. Uh, I go over all the details and all the full features. It's the first English video that gets to show off everything about the toy. Uh, and I'm thrilled that Yolo Park chose me to do that video. Uh, it's polished, it's pre-edited, it's pre-scripted, everything is like high quality, it's even filmed in 4K, so if you haven't checked it out, please go check it out, it's, uh, there's a lot of work put into it. Alright, so, uh, as I'm recording this, PulseCon finished up their Transformers presentation, and yeah, as expected, they announced essentially the entire first wave of United, uh, the final piece of the Legacy Trilogy. And I'm reasonably happy with what I saw. I'm reasonably happy with what I saw. So as usual, let's go in with my opinions, even though my opinions I'm sure people are going to disagree with. But hey, let's actually talk about it. So yeah, there is the poster for Transformers Legacy United. Yes, we're going to talk about this poster at the end. Because I know you've told me. I know. Trust me, I was kicking me. I was kicking me very hard. Uh, but let's put that aside. Let's put that aside for now. We'll go over the toys and we'll do it the same way they did. We'll go by size class, which means the first ones we're going to be talking about are the cores, and that in includes Energon Megatron. Fortunately, the official photos did start to drop, though for the Deluxes and Voyagers, they didn't show off, uh, they didn't show the stock photos of their vehicles yet. They'll come, but for right now, um, you gotta strike while the iron's hot. Work with what I got. So we'll 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 make it work. We'll make it work. All right. So basically, we got a tiny little version of Energon Megatron, which is pretty faithfully redone. Energon Megatron doesn't have the most complex design. So going into the core class, that's actually kind of suited. It actually kind of works. Obviously, some details are changed, but it looks good. It's a nice little petite size Megatron. I do like that they've did away with the translucent plastic. They made more show accurate with the solid bright green. Works really well. We see in the robot mode, he does actually have a tank with a sword blade on it. Perfect. Uh, I'm thrilled with that one. Yeah, it just looks like it's going to be a nice little desktop size piece of nostalgia for Energon fans. It's great. Absolutely great. I mean, this is the kind of thing I hope they do a little bit more often. You know, it's almost like, you know, their version of World's Smallest for you know, 2000s Transformers. So, uh, Mega, you know, Megatron looking good. Uh, what about Tasmania Kid? The Tasmanian Devil Mode is adorable, by the way. Oh, uh, it, it, it actually looks way cuter than the, like, the huge-headed one that the original toy was. Keep in mind, this is Beast Wars Snarl. Uh, there's no real change to the toy between the two versions that I'm aware of. No major ones, at least. Uh, but no, this looks really cute. This looks really cute. And I'm really glad to see that, you know, beyond, you know, they're doing a little bit of representation for the Japanese fiction beyond just the leaders, you know, because the leaders are always going to sell to collectors. This is out of the left field, and this is actually pretty cool. And glad they're going with Tasmania Kid, not Snarl, you know, because Snarl wasn't really a character in much. Um, the robot mode looks really, really nice. Uh, I am happy to see the smaller head uh, rather than that gigantic head feet thing the original one had. It's really well proportioned, really well done. A, a little bit of it does kind of feel like it's the original toy without the spring-loaded gimmick, but it is screen accurate. They were accurate in the an the Beast Wars second animation for how he looked as a toy. So, you know, it's actually, uh, yeah, it's actually pretty consistent. So glad to see that. Boulder Crash. Now we're getting into those weird listings that just said rock. And this is where things got interesting. So 
we, we pretty much expected it was going to be this year's weaponizer. And that's essentially what it is. The term they kept using was armorizer. And the only, the, all, every time they said it, I'm like, you cowards, just call them rock lords. It's essentially what they're homaging. They're actually homaging a few things. They actually talked about, they did mention rock lords. They actually did mention the, the rock lords. But they also mentioned uh, things like uh, 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 My Friend Six Shot. The episode from headmasters where they fought rock creatures so it, it's pulling from a few different inspiration sources we've had living rock characters and transformers before but this is living rock characters who turn into vehicles as well as separate into armor for the larger characters uh boulder crash he's a trike and i mean it's interesting because he just kind of looks like a pile of rocks on wheels. I think that's just kind of what they were going for. And it's a really interesting aesthetic. And then when we get to the robot mode. Okay, yeah. like it, I mean, fairly simple looking. Fairly simple looking, but definitely unique. I do like the idea. We'll see it a little bit here. I'll talk about it a little bit better uh, when we go into the deluxes. But I do kind of like mixing the, the aesthetics here. Especially doing something that they've not done before. I especially like, like the orange highlights in between the rocks. Like there's a little magma flowing through. That looks kind of cool. I actually really like this. So uh, they did mention. They did kind of like suggest that they might be able to have like an unofficial combined mode. Or maybe an official one. All they did was they mentioned that you know in the G1 the rock characters could combine. Uh, if you notice on this one. It's hard to see, but there is a like a long peg that goes all the way from the back down to the ground on this toy. And it does look like it'd be a large handle if that big blade were, you know, somehow a giant weapon for a combiner. Just saying, just saying. Uh, I think they did mention that this one could be wielded as a weapon by others, by other characters and toys. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out and how the pattern works. Okay, we'll go into the deluxes now. And the deluxes start with Bumblebee that we've talked about several times now. The the big capper that came out about Bumblebee is, one, they did try really hard to get the paint yellow to match the plastic yellow. And I always appreciate that effort. And then they also mentioned that the original head sculpt was probably a lot closer to, like, how Bulkhead and RC turned out. More generation styled. But the more they designed it, the more they realized we want to stay true to Derek Wyatt's design style. So we got a far more anime uh, animated accurate head, and I do appreciate that they did they made that change. Now and again, he looks good. He looks good. But we get to talk about the other deluxes now. Chase from the Rescue Bots, and Chase looks really really good. I mean, super clean, uh, like really solid looking Transformer. And uh, you know, uh, yeah, no real backpack to speak of that I can see from here. Traditional stylings. I mean, he's got the chase shape to him. But also, you know, it's just a very nice looking generation style figure. They mentioned that the retool of this they've already seen. And it looks really, really good. And it's something that would make fans happy. Um, Looking at Chase off the bat, I can't quite tell who that character might be or who this could be retooled into. Um, I just sit back and think on that one a little bit because there's a lot of traditional elements of design to the character. I mean, I look at this and I think to myself, you could just retool this into like most of the throttle bots. That's what springs to my head right away. And they have not gotten new toys. So uh, that, that would actually be a, a nice little throw, a little nice little nod. But whatever they got planned, whatever they're cooking, um, yeah, like it's, it's gonna. It looks like it's gonna have a good base. This looks like a really, really nice figure. Uh, and then we see the vehicle mode from the side, very traditional police car looking. He's got the like the lights slash gun slash things on the sides. They're on his arms or on the side. I'm not quite sure what's going on with those, but <laughs> he does look nice. He looks nice. It's a nice switch up from the traditional like black and white police cars we get with Prowl all the time. So it's nice to see a little bit of a. A different flair to our cop car Autobot assortment. So Chase looking good. Chase looking really good. More of this. More of like upgrading the kid friendly auto Transformers into like collector friendly. All right, Magnius. Now we really get into the rock of the situation. So the gimmick to this is that these do come apart just like all the Junkions, the fossilizers, etc. 
like the Junkions, you do not have to tear them apart to transform them. They can transform all without part forming. Always good to hear. But they can separate and become weapons and armor for larger figures. So it's very much continuing the Junkion style of how to do these. Um, I do really like, like I, meant, like I said before, I really do like the mixing of aesthetics here. Like he really does look like a robot that is just built from rocks. And it's an interesting twist. I can remember there was one of the canceled G1 concepts that we talked about on this channel before was animalistic designs with vehicle modes. So you it had like a dump truck that had aspects of a buffalo on the front. You know, look, you know, the cab section looked like the head there. You know, it had the horns. So things like that make me think that would be a really cool and unique thing to do. And we kind of get that here. Uh, with these rocky figures. Now, admittedly, the truck mode kind of looks like like someone went mudding and never cleans their car ever. <laughs> this is just a weekend mudding truck, and they just don't want to take the mud off for whatever reason. I, I guess they like breaking their suspensions with a few extra tons of weight on it. Uh, it's a different design. It's a very different aesthetic. Um, it really makes me wonder if they just, like... There's this, there's, because of course there's that part of me that like screams like, you cowards, just give us transforming rocks. <laughs> give us a real rock lord. This is as close as we're going to get though. Okay, so the rock has to have a vehicle. Okay, I guess the rock can have a vehicle. As long as the aesthetic is there, you know, at least it's doing something new and interesting and different. So, I, okay, I will go for the rocks. Um... Well, at least at first, at least at first, I mean, I will admit none of these like weaponizer things, even the junkions, they don't really grab me as much as I thought they would. But this might be because this is crazy unique. And then Windblade. I thought it was funny during the stream. They actually mentioned the same thing I brought up with it. Yeah, for a while she was everywhere and then she was nowhere. Like, you know, Windblade just kind of vanished from everything. So we finally got a new Windblade toy. It's based on the Cyberverse design, which is nice because it allows her to have some uh, additional details that are kind of important, like the fact that her feet are much larger. Uh, and so she actually has a really good vertical base, which uh, the previous Windblades did not. The original Windblade toy, not the easiest toy to keep on her feet. But this looking really, really good. They've changed the blade style to flame, so it looks like a contrail in jet mode. It's actually not a bad call itself. And yeah, it does It does look good. It, you know, kind of like, I mean, she's got a backpack where her nose cone goes, but she's a female transformer. I kind of expect the backpack at this point, even if you have bulked out the design a little bit. Um, we didn't really get a good look at the jet mode. What I can see from the jet mode is she kind of still has that wind blade transformation, you know, you know. You know, they not re you know, the one thing I don't like about the wind blades is they never really try to reinvent the figure. You know, how like how many different ways has have they figured out how to transform Starscream? But when it comes to wind blade, it's always just the kind of same kind of like, OK, legs flip over, become the rear, you know, nose cone flips out. It's the backpack. That's how Titans Return work, too. And uh, da, 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 OK, OK. And then there you get the wind blade. I mean, even Optimus Prime, like the parts have to go in certain spots, but they still find ways of like mixing it up from time to time. So hopefully the benefit of this Windblade is she's a lot more solid than they've been in the past. That's what I'm looking for out of this Windblade. You know, if you know, there's not going to be a reinvention to her, but we didn't at least shore her up, right? I oh, know. Good looking, good looking figure. Okay, then we move into the Voyagers. We've seen the Optimus. We've talked about the Optimus. And yeah, uh, everyone seemed to really like the Optimus and how it came out. So it did come out really good. I still really love how this thing looks. And then we get to the other Voyager, Thundertron. And I am just like... I know Thundertron's been in the listings and rumors for a while now. But there's always that part of me going like, Really? You just did a White Lion Transformer. Why are you going to do another White Lion Transformer? They mentioned during this that they still get uh, they still get messages about Polar Claw. Why did you cancel Polar Claw? You put Polar Claw in the poster. Why didn't you make a Polar Claw? And I'm kind of standing here going like, yeah, that should have been a Polar Claw. That feels like a wasted slot. I mean, at least Polar Claw is a legacy character. You know, uh, you know um, admittedly, 
The reason I don't like Thundertron being in this listing is the same reason that Polar Claw wouldn't make sense. There's other characters that I feel like should have come first. You know, if we're doing a Voyager from Transformers Prime, where's Soundwave? Where's Starscream? You know, I, I, I really would have liked to see them. I mean, it feels like a wasted spot. It really feels like a wasted spot. Because honestly, like, Thundertron really... Kind of unique look in the robot mode. But also very i always thought a very weak alternate mode and I, I have not seen anything about this toy this makes me think otherwise yeah it's just i don't know i don't know i i feel like there's a lot of characters i would have much rather have seen at this price point i i really feel like this is just kind of like i don't know wasting space i i really would have preferred it to go to a different character I mean, this is this is the one where I'm just kind of going to be kind of grumpy about it and go, <laughs> I know there's people like the character. Every Transformer is someone's first. Every Transformer is someone's favorite. So the people who grew up with Thundertron and really like the toy, okay, fine. You you are eating well today. Congratulations. Me personally, I feel like this should be a, should be a very low priority character because it's not really a character. It didn't appear in anything. He was toy, he was toy line only. <sighs> This just makes me even more curious about the other Thundertron listing that came up that's leader class. Because I don't know how you're going to bulk this up to leader class if that's the plan. But I digress. This is where I'm going to be like the grumpy guts. Let's move on to something a little bit more interesting. We got our leader class and it's Tiger Hawk. Oh, by the way, <laughs> you know, we're doing a big white and blue cat. We're doing a big white and blue cat. At the Voyager price, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna sell a big white and blue cat at the Leader price point too. Smart. Ironically, because the paint job, the the repaint of uh, this toy originally back in the day is the reason we didn't get a purple tidal wave because toys like this meant there were too many per, you know, uh, meant there was too much purple on the market at the time. Oh, it's fun how that works around. Oh, but don't worry, don't worry, we'll get to that too. So, uh, they didn't mention that they're going for more purple instead of the blue of the original toy. So, they are trying to be a little bit more show accurate. You know, they're trying to work in some of the details from, you know, Tigatron and Air Razor's toys. So, you might see a little bit more detail fleshed out. Um, this is, again, a Transmetal 2 that's done with no vac chrome. They did mention, like, oh, we have to do shiny at some point, right? No, you don't. No, you don't. I want a Transmetal that's actually going to look good a year after I buy it. That's what I want. Metallic paint? Yes. Do not do vac metal. Please, please, for all that is holy, please do not do vac metal transmetals again. That will end in tears. You do have to do transmetals eventually, but metallic paint, please. You know, Tigatron and Dragon Megatron are perfect. They're, they're fine. They're, you don't have to do anything else to them. You don't have to shine them up. We don't want that. But no, Tiger Hawk looks really, really good. Um, I wish we could have seen the wings like swept back and, and like furled out like it's in flight, but I'll take what I can get. The back legs do look a little bit scrawny and weak. Um, the, the original one had like bird legs in the back too, but they're a little bit beefier than this. This just seems a little bit, they seem just like a little bit small. Uh, but beyond that, no, I mean, it's a really cool rendition of Tiger Hawk. It's actually it's a really it's really really cool from a toy that was almost canceled when it was first released to getting a major release in the modern line. It's come a long way, and it's a little bit more for the Beast cast. All right, so I believe that's the end of the reveals. They told a few more things here too. So they mentioned that the leader classes are now going to have open windows as well, uh, and they haven't put the plastic inserts back yet. So just that is great. That's what I want at the toy aisle. This is just is to see my $55 figure without a head. Good on you, Hasbro. Uh, they did, you know, touch on the PulseCon exclusive hotshot again. Okay, and always nice to see. Yes, it's still looking really good. We did get the Transformers Hall of Fame, which, you know, there's no real surprises to it this time. Uh, Takio Ejima became the human inductee. He's been with the brand for 35 years. He's produced a lot of toys from our childhood and yeah, and still going strong. So awesome to see him in the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame toy is going to be the Armada Optimus Prime, which is a good call. It's a fantastic figure. I think it made everyone who was waiting on that toy really, really happy. 
Uh, and then the character, they told us to pick a character from R.I.D. 2001. And so, of course, Skybite made the Hall of Fame. Um, and appropriately timed with uh, Peter Spellos uh, battling cancer and having a GoFundMe to afford his medical bills. So I hope everything goes well with him. I really do not want to lose him. He is, like, in my brief experience with the man, he has been exceptionally cool. So I'm uh, hoping all the best for him, hoping that he can beat it and hopefully recover. And then, yes, let's talk posters. Yes, I know I said Magnetron would never be done again. How was I supposed to know Hasbro would lose their minds? How was I supposed to know? So, you know, the, the argument I made about Magmatron is that he's too complicated and too colorful to do as a modern figure, especially because you're not going to get any kind of repaint or retool out of him. You know what never has to worry about repaints and retools? Commander class toys. Occasionally they do, but it is a line, it is a size class of Transformer that does not have to depend on those repaints. So yeah, Magmatron can be done in that in that line. I mean, it's really cool to see. It's an incredibly unique design, so awesome that we're actually getting him. Um, but yeah. Uh, there, there's actually, like, I speculate already that he'd be Commander class, so, um, but, uh, that's actually going off of, uh, a notable leaker who already said that, yeah, he's going to be Commander class, so, yeah, that actually makes sense, that actually makes sense, uh, I'm, what I'm hoping here is that the articulation is better than the original, of course it will be, but I'm, I'm looking for how they figure out how to make the head rotate, given the limitations, you know what I love about this? It means that they are completely unhinged and they can do just about anything. And that means we might get a Beast Wars second Galvatron that can be repainted and retooled into super cool, weird stuff. I'm really looking forward to that because I love that toy, but it has gold plastic, so I'm terrified to touch mine. So I really want a new one. I really want a new one where that is not a worry. Uh, yeah, and then the Titan in the room. Um, so look at that right side. And yeah, we have Tidal Wave. The posters always show who the Titan is going to be. So in this case, I have to believe that the Titan is Tidal Wave. Because the only if command if if Magmatron is a commander, then Tidal Wave can't be the leader because then it'd be too small for it to make sense for the character. They try to keep some kind of scale. So he is going to be the Titan which is fantastic. I am so happy. I got the Magmatron wrong, but my speculation about about Tidal Wave was correct. So I'm batting 500 right now. That's really good. Uh, you can also see that, yeah, there is a Megatron. It's cut off on your screen right now, but you can see uh, Megatron there combined with Tidal Wave. And you have to wonder, well, why? how is he combined with Tidal Wave if Tidal Wave is going to be a Titan and Megatron is still going to be a leader? So, let's be honest here. Um, Tidal Wave is not the most complex Transformer. He splits into the three different boats, which is cool, but to actually transform the toy really doesn't require a whole lot of steps. It really is just like unfold the front, fold the legs out, rotate the chest. There is your Tidal Wave. So, I don't really suspect the Titan is going to do too much more in the way of transformation. Could be. Probably will be. But it's going to have a lot of bulk left over. I'm expecting a system where chunks of Tidal Wave can be removed, probably from the inner sections or from compartments that open up, in order to give Megatron the armor. They'd be basically tiny pieces, tiny versions of Tidal Wave's boat modes that would combine onto Megatron in order to create a super mode. This has an extra benefit aside from the fact that Tidal Wave still gets to be a Titan. But keep in mind, if that leader class Megatron were to have hold held, like imagine like having the like the aircraft carrier section hanging off his arm. So that toy doesn't have the best arm joints, right? It doesn't have super tight or ratcheted arm joints. So holding that weight up is not going to be easy. Keep in mind, if it was a piece of tidal wave, you'd be dealing with two articulated detailed arms connected together. That's a lot of extra components inside, which it's a lot denser, it's a lot heavier. You know, even if this was a leader class toy doing that, the Armada Megatron leader toy would have no chance of holding that arm up. This way, 
if it's just a chunk that looks like the battle set, like imagine if it's just like off of Tidal Wave's shoulder and it's just like a strip of his uh, aircraft carrier that just pops out and it looks like a mini aircraft carrier that latches onto Megatron's arm, it's going to be hollow plastic. It's going to be very light, which means Megatron is not going to have to sacrifice his articulation. He's still going to be able to move and hold up all the additional weight of the armor. That's actually a really smart way to do it if that's the route they go with. And really, I can't imagine any way they're going to do it if Tidal Wave is the Titan and leakers have said, yeah, Tidal Wave is the Titan, then yeah, that's going to be the only option. Or uh, I saw someone else speculate he might have like a smaller like section that disassembles into the armor, like an, like a completely additional component. I think that might be a little bit more than I expected. I think that might be a little bit more than necessary, but we'll see. We'll see. There are ways to do it. But nevertheless, uh, yeah, I got my way. I got my way. Tidal Waves the Titan, and I'm so excited for that. Ah, man. Like, I haven't been this excited for a Titan in a long time. I was not really into Metroplex. I felt like that was meh, because he's never... Let's be honest, he's never been a great figure. And, and then, like... I never got Nemesis. I still don't have Titan Nemesis because it just, for whatever reason, like the robot mode just doesn't strike me as interesting. Vehicle mode, yes. Robot mode, not really. Uh, so I've not been in any urgency to get that. You know, at some point it's probably going to be on clearance for 50% off and I'll find it then. But no, I'm getting Tidal Wave. Tidal Wave might be the rare time I don't wait for a clearance sale for Titans. I might just drop all the money right away. So... That's PulseCon for the year. Lots of really cool reveals. Lots of really cool stuff to anticipate and speculate on. Looking forward to seeing how Magmatron works, how Tidal Wave works, and how they're going to follow this up because this is actually a pretty strong showing. There's a lot of unique stuff here. There's a lot of left field choices and a lot of really cool characters. So I'm kind of excited for what's to come next. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you got in on all the pre-orders because those are probably going to be a nightmare to get on some of these. Uh, but hope everyone has enjoyed. I will see you next time. I'm like, I think you guys got this. I will back away, and I will see you all later. You've got this handled. <laughs> Alafi's like, really? You're not going to help me? Like, it's fine now. It's like, these disgusting <laughs> creatures breathing down my neck, and you're all just like, I believe in you. You got this. That all burn. right, you seem He's... to have this. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs>